Hello everyone, back with another video, and this time we're going to get into painting. Airbrushing to be more exact. So, I already uh, primed all the parts. Uh, I'm going to use gray primer for any of the colored parts. And I used black primer for the metallic look that... I'm going to be using on like all the interior um, parts. But anyways, I'm just using, uh, as most people would call it, really shitty <laughs> or crappy um, airbrush, the Master Airbrush. I think this was like 20 bucks, and it works great for me. Um, you know, I have, I have an Iwata, the HPC Plus. Um, I use this strictly for lacquer paints, um, just because sometimes lacquers can be a little bit harder to clean out, depending on what I'm using, and the Iwata cup area is a lot easier to clean than the Master Airbrush. See that big divot versus that nice clean... down to the needle down there but yeah um plus I was having a problem back when I was first starting airbrushing where I would want to use a lacquer paint or an enamel and then I would want to switch over to an acrylic and because those two things do not mix at all um I was having a lot of clogging issues so to avoid all of that I just decided to have two separate airbrushes for the occasion. So what I did is I separated all the parts into the pieces that I want to paint them in. So we're going to be painting the first few pieces in orange. I only need a few drops of it because there's not a lot of pieces. Essentially what I'm doing on the kit is I'm replacing all the white parts that were on this kit. And I'm replacing it with a nice bright orange. And right now I'm spraying at 20 PSI. Which, I mean, it's... You can go lower, but I mean... It's all down to preference, really. And um, I'm using Vallejo uh, paints right now. The, this one was the, on the Mecca line, the orange. I love the new Mecca line for Vallejo. I love the color ranges. Oh, it's so beautiful. Um, I can't recommend their colored uh, paints enough. That's what I paint all of my kits in most, mostly, unless I'm doing like um, a lot of the chrome and like gold and like uh, essentially like inner frame work um then i'm using all my alkalad paints because they have a really nice like alkalad paints they just go on beautifully when it comes to all the all the metallic effects essentially and they have really cool candying effects um for their line of paint so i highly recommend that if you're gonna do any kind of uh work with metallics but I mean I'm gonna be for this kit I'm just gonna be using Vallejo's uh, dark steel um, another thing noting with paint is lacquer paints are very 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 toxic and you definitely need to get yourself a uh, hazard mask um, that protects that has protection against um, chemicals because you do not want to be inhaling any of that those nasty fumes that come off of um, off of those products. So that was it for the orange part. Really, really simple. Just only a few parts. And then I decided to um, I decided to change up some of the red. I thought the I thought the red on the kit could have used a lot more darker red options versus the really nice bright red. So I'm going to be using these two different colors. I'm going to be using Vallejo's Mecca Dark Red. 
and then they're just their regular red. Now this is a very bright red. I love it. Um, so it's going to look really nice paired up with this dark, this dark red. So we'll go ahead and paint all the dark red parts. And uh, for this airbrush, and this is how I started out airbrushing most of my kits, is I didn't do any um, part separation with, uh, you know, masking, and I just pretty much changed up the colors um, of the parts, how they were already molded. So that's what I'm doing with this tutorial. I'm doing it how I used to do it and was just starting to get into airbrushing and all my Gumpla modifications. So, and I still want to show that, you know, you don't, you don't have to do all the masking in the world or, um, or any of the modifications that you see to make a Gundam that you really like, you know, it's, it's however you want to make it come out. Um, so these are all going to be on the dark red side. And to be honest, I think this is, this is way easier to do to just straight paint, um, parts like these. Because all you're doing is literally just changing um, the color of the entire part. Now what you could do if you wanted to be super meticulous about it is you could go in and, you know, where that panel line is at, you can technically make that a different color right here if you wanted. Oh, come on. Yeah. But for the simplicity of... How I started out getting into airbrushing and made it really simple for myself, a really good way to um, a really good way to, you know, let's say you wanted to change the color of a kit. A really, really simple way to go ahead and go about that is, um, is to actually follow the parts how they were on the kit, so, um, Let's say you had, like what I'm doing with all the white parts, I'm just simply changing all the white parts to, to orange. You know, you can, you can follow that guideline, or like, uh, there's a few dark parts on, like I believe, yeah, this is a dark, a dark red piece. Um, you could definitely just go ahead and follow the original, like, essentially color scheme of the kit, but just changing the, the colors of it. Which works really well if you just want to, like, change it up a little bit of, instead of having just the old school color scheme on it. But yeah. Nothing... Nothing too complicated with the this first painting video. And I mean, even when I'm painting a Gundam, personally... I kind of have a good idea of what it's going to look like, and there's a bunch of people that take the time to, like, uh, there's essentially line art um, that I found on uh, the Reddit page for the Gundam. Uh, I, I believe it's just called, uh, I'd have to look, but there's a Reddit page where I'll, I'll have a link of it in the description where they have a bunch of line art just for like Gundam designs, a bunch of different ones. And you can go in and you can go in and color paint all the line art to make it exactly how you want it to have a plan going in. Like I I I just sometimes I'm like, okay, this would look pretty cool if this was a different color. And it's actually kind of funny going it about that way because then um when you when you're done with the with painting and then you snap it all together and you're like oh wow that actually looks really cool because you had a general idea of how you wanted it painted but you really didn't know for sure how it would look until you actually snap it together when it's all done so i think having that like ooh what's it going to look like aspect to it afterwards is Kind of fun in a way.
But I'm just going to go ahead and prime the rest of these red parts, and I'm going to go about... Uh, not prime, I'm sorry, I meant uh, coloring them into the color that I want. I'm going to go about doing that with the rest of these. Essentially, the rest of the the kit is going to be painted like this, so... If I run into any problems, I'll slow down the video and show you in a bit. One bad thing about these long uh, skewers that I have is that they're really hard to work with. I should have used these ones. These are much better, much shorter, but oh well. So a thing to, a good thing this is probably happening. Um, acrylics have a tendency also to, this is another good thing about uh, the lacquers and enamels, they don't clog as easily as acrylics do. They just dry out really quickly on the needle and, um, uh, they sometimes can clog your airbrush really, really badly, but, uh, it still doesn't stop me from using them because some of the, the, it's just the color variety that, I've seen with most acrylic paints, um, other than, you know, like Mr. Color and, um, I mean, to me it has a good selection of colors, it's just not as vibrant and, in my opinion, I don't think it's as vibrant as, like, the Vallejos, the Vallejo paint that are optioned, but, um, If you do, if you are able to get your hands on, like, Mr. Color, that is a great paint, um, from what I've heard of, to spray on, because I believe they sell those in, uh, they're lacquer-based paints, so, 
you get the quality of really durable paint plus having some good variety of colors I mean you really can't go wrong it's just harder to get your hands on in the United States versus like Japan and stuff and it's unfortunate but it is what it is for now these black parts with the dark steel Alejo. Now, I found this out a while ago um, when I first started airbrushing. Um, I found out that it was good to paint with a, a black underneath for any kind of metallic, whether it be gold, brass, you know, silver, chrome, you name it. Uh, all I found out was that you needed, like, a, a black underneath to really bring out that that shine. Now, what some of the videos that I've seen on YouTube don't tell you is that it should really try and be, a like, a, a really glossy black, if possible, because that gloss will really make this, this coat of metallic really pop because um, I've, I've definitely seen some 
some gun, and I'm not saying this is a bad thing if they're definitely trying to go for the look like that, but uh, if you want it to be like a really nice glossy metallic, um, you definitely want a uh, a high gloss for your black because otherwise it will just kind of look muted and like it'll look metallic, but it definitely, how should I put it, it won't feel metallic if that's the, what, the right word I'm looking for. Uh, it it looks more flat than anything. Um, and what I've noticed sometimes with the acrylics is that that isn't Alkalad because Alkalad's paints are just crazy. Um, when it comes to all their, like they're literally designed strictly just for metallics. Um, so they have some really amazing products, but, uh, even noticing a little bit now is, I can tell that it's still coming up slightly on the flat-ish side, but it's definitely not as bad if, like, let's say you're just using, like, a, a matte black, then it'll definitely look, like, really flat, uh, colors. Or, not colors, um, really flat metallics. Whereas when you think of like a metallic, you want something really shiny and almost polished, like depending on the look you're going for. But that's just a little tip I found out later down the line about um, metallics and gloss black. They always want to be friends. And another quick thing about metallics as well, um, sometimes depending on the type of metallic, like some of Vallejo's, uh, other metallic, other metallics that they offer, um, they will need a higher PSI to be sprayed through the airbrush properly, unfortunately. It's just because of the the way the metallics are made, like with the the shiny flax that are in them. Um, it just takes a little bit more to push those through the airbrush. So right now, uh, I'm still working at 20 psi. But if like let's say I was working at um, 15 or 10, oh man, it would it would have be having a really hard time spitting out this metallic.
Alrighty guys, and that is, get the camera on, there we go, and that is all the parts painted, yeah, it's all of them, and that is for an entire HG kit, so, just to give you an idea, that took me about, just to paint all of it one solid color, around, mm, I want to say an hour, so it's not that bad. I mean, but that's also me doing it for a really long time. So it's kind of nothing for me to do like an HG all in one go if it's just one solid color. But I mean, that all comes with practice. And the best thing I can offer for advice when it comes to first getting into airbrush is I'll link in the description. Um, the starter kit that I used and still use to this get to this day um, about the airbrushes, the the you know the little little pot for to clean your airbrush in. This is like thirty bucks. It's I mean it's a little bit of investment. I don't recommend going out and buying an Iwata, you know, when you first start out personally <laughs> because you know it's. This is all you need. You, well, this is my new compressor. That one, that was the original one. But uh, after using it for a while, I will say it kind of broke. I used it too much, so. <laughs> the starter kit will involve this. Um, but, you know, for the amount of time that I got out of it, I mean, that lasted me for a good, I want to say, year and a half. And that was, you know, consecutively airbrushing almost day in day out with this thing when I had the chance to but yeah my my workstation is a little bit of a mess don't judge me on it <laughs> it's I don't know I'll eventually get like shelving to go up there but we'll see um this little pipe was a recent uh addition because uh, I was having some ventilation problems with this not because of the suction or anything but um uh the way I'm facing, I would recommend having this towards like a window or something so it actually goes out the window. But me, I just kind of had it like shooting into the, even though it was get a, getting filtered out through here, it wasn't filtering everything. So it was shooting out into the rest of the, the basement and it was getting all cloudy and oh boy, it was fun times. But uh, yeah, so I'll link in the description a starter kit that, or like a starter set if anyone wants to get into airbrushing. It's relatively inexpensive. The biggest thing that will probably be your biggest investment is, honestly, ironically, is not this equipment. None of this equipment is going to be the investment, like what I made an investment with this. This Vallejo uh, uh, game air set literally cost me like 200 and something bucks. It was a lot. But I'm like, you know what, I, I want more colors. And, but that was after I did it for a while and I just was getting colors that I needed for projects and I was like you know what I want a lot of colors at my disposal and this seemed like a pretty well investment so and I was pretty well into airbrushing and I knew that I really wanted to do it and do something fun with it so with all these parts all done um I'm actually going to do something different normally what I would do is I would just go ahead and uh uh top coat these with a with a gloss um but i'm gonna try something different i'm gonna actually put this back together and i have some rattle cans upstairs that i wanted to try out um because some people what they do is they assemble a, a kit back together after they're done painting it and then they top coat it that way or you can top coat it when they're on the runners like this not on the runners ha. i meant uh on the little uh alligator clips which is what I used to but I think doing it this way is gonna save me a lot of time and I've been and it's a new paint um that I'm not it's not even a paint it's a it's a new top coat that I just found that's relatively cheap versus buying uh I think these are eight dollars wait is there a price on here no there used to be but these are these are expensive like really freaking expensive um so i wanted to try something out i'll try the 
durability on it, see if I can drop the parts from, or at least the, the kit from high up to see if it'll chip at all. But after it's done curing, because if it doesn't cure, that's not really a proper judgment of the, of the uh, sealer. So I'm going to try that. Not this. This is, this works great, but it's too expensive. I mean, in my opinion, I want to find things as cheap as possible for the most part. And I mean, going, uh, some people go with uh, paint to paint, like Tamiya, only with Tamiya, but I don't. I just kind of go all go all out and be like, okay, I'm just going to do this and see if it works. And if it does, great. But anyways, I'll catch you guys in the next video. And I'll talk to you next time. Uh, like, subscribe, comment. Please comment if you have any questions because I know airbrushing is a very daunting thing. And I'm more than happy to help any of you guys out if you have any questions. So I'll be looking forward to reading your comments. I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.